Welcome Warlords, Raj here, your uh, local free range hobby horn dog. I'm here with Hamza, who we met in our Swedish episode. So we are back to chat about the Byzantine forces. How's it going, man? It's going pretty good. How about you, Rogers? I'm good. I'm good. So, uh, you know, we've chatted a little bit back and forth about the Byzantine. So folks might know that I'm building a Byzantine force and you've been running them for a while and um, you sent me some resources about building the warband stuff like that so thank you for that uh, but originally i was gonna we we're gonna hold off on this one for a while so i could get a few games under my belt but uh with the saga 2.0 coming through i thought that we needed to move the timetable up a bit and we're gonna rely on your considerable knowledge here to get us through. Uh, <laughs> all right, does that sound good? Well, sh yeah, sure. Uh, considerable knowledge might be debated, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I played them in a <laughs> in a couple of tournaments here in Sweden, uh, and also in uh, like practice games. Mm -hmm. I think I played them in uh, maybe four tournaments with uh, you know three or four game ones, and then some practice games with that. And they're my first faction, so I have. Uh, I'm kind of biased uh, against them, as people usually are with their first faction, you know? <laughs> uh-huh. You, you always think that it's kind of weaker than it really is, than everybody else thinks. Okay. Have you, uh, yeah, I kind of feel that? that way with like my Anglo-Saxon and Anglo-Danes. So I guess it's good to know that that is uh, a common feeling. So I'm like, ah, it's like, yeah. I gotta get a different different <laughs> faction. These guys aren't so good. That that's must be why uh, I'm yeah. getting my butt So kicked. I just want to say that beforehand, so people know that if I'm overly critical, it's just it's just uh, you know the first warband bias, or how do you want to call it? <laughs> well, uh, let's get into the unit choices real quick, so we can get the foundation for the battle sure. board discussion. So. Looks like the Warlords and the Hearth Guards uh, have to be mounted, so that's kind of interesting. And then the Hearth Guards can be equipped with bows, but if they do, their armor and melee would be reduced to four as well. The Warriors can have bows or spears. If they have bows, then their armor is going to be reduced to three. And then your Levies can have Javelins. So... Uh, no, no bows or slings there, just the jabs for those guys. But, yeah. okay, so... Um, Before you go on, yeah, there's one thing yeah. that uh, you have to know here, is that they can not use, like, swords for hire. So no uh, bards, no monks, or anything like that. You can't oh, use okay. that with the Byzantines. Because uh, a bard could sometimes be really useful. Uh, he generates the saga dice and so on, but but you can't use them. You can only use the, you can use the priests, and then you can use the mercenaries in these uh, in this supplement. Uh, yeah, the uh, step step tribes, step nomads guys. Um, so you could hire hello? those. Yeah, because they specifically say that they can join those guys. But okay, good to go. So they can still take uh, a could, priest because it's not those aren't yeah. swords for hire, right? Okay. No. Uh, just quickly about the Step Nomads, what they have, so they're like uh, a cavalry unit uh, that activates as levy. You get eight of them and they have uh, uh, composite bows. Uh, and they're a little be better at shooting uh, than uh, they get a reroll on once, and uh, this is in the FAQ, and they also uh, fight like levy, uh, basically. Okay. Yeah, it looks like uh, they get a short movement bonus whenever they move. Yeah. yeah. And they have a special rule that if they reduce their attack dice to gain defense dice, they actually have to discard all of their attack dice. And they gain one defense dice per attack die discarded. That sounds... I don't know how that... I haven't a chance to use that so much, but does that mean that they... I mean, if you discard... Uh, like eight of them generate like what three attack dice? Correct. So you toss those and three then, for three defense. And then you get dice. three defense. Okay, so. that's that's good. I didn't know that. <laughs> 
Yeah, it's just under the uh, the horseman role. Yeah, so. I see it. I see it. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. But if you haven't played too many games with them, there's probably haven't had yeah. much opportunity. I mean, if you're those guys are getting into combat, you're probably not not doing it right. But well, maybe sometimes you want to block something, and but we can go go into that when we talk about True. army composition later. Yeah, yeah, it seems like some of these abilities are about getting other units in the way and uh, yeah, present, yeah. presenting different choices. So, all right, let's get to the board. So the uh, normal activations there on the left for Hearthguard, yeah. Warriors, and Levies. The activation pool looks normal. The combat pool is melee shooting and shooting reaction. So it looks like you got the full uh, gamut of options there. There's no restrictions. But I just want to say yeah. two things here, to, sorry to interrupt, but yeah. what, what is noticeable is that the Contoratoi and the Toxotai, the warriors, can be activated on helmets, which are the uncommons. So you get like the common and uncommon to activate warriors, which is unusual for, to oh. many war bands. Okay, yeah, I guess I didn't because notice that. Because these guys are like well-trained and drilled in tactics and shit i don't know <laughs> okay it makes sense so there's a yeah. little uh extra nugget there so if you're running warriors you're gonna have more options available to you uh okay yeah this is something that takes people to uh, with surprise sometimes when i play the byzantines that they don't know that i can activate warriors with the uncommon so it's good to know if you're facing these guys mm -hmm. Interesting. Uh, one more thing about yeah. the combat pool it has the shooting reaction uh, you can gain a defense dice in a shooting reaction or an attack dice. And this is like the only defense against shooting you have. Unless you're putting guys in front. But this is, you don't have any kind of shooting defense on the board. And this is worth keeping in mind if you're play, playing a warband that relies on doing a lot of shooting damage. Uh, that you maybe put a dice or two there. Okay. So that's, uh, that's yeah, that's good to point out. Um, looks like a lot of the abilities kind of work with shooting so you might be taking those warriors with bows and with the three plus armor they're going to be pretty pretty juicy targets themselves so yeah yeah absolutely ha having the uh, shooting reaction dice there will be good so why don't we jump to the first activation uh, ability ma mast archery you want to read this one uh sure you have, you have the battle board uh, let me see uh so yeah, this stupid uh, non-alcoholic beer has me burping all the time. <laughs> all right, uh, designate up to two of your units and activate them for a shooting. For these shootings, the activated units may ignore friendly units that would otherwise block their line of sight. Okay, so this takes so, uh, a common and an uncommon dice in order to activate exactly. it. Um, okay, so cool, yeah, this already mentions uh you know the, the blocking stuff you kind of talked about a little bit before yeah uh so you know if you wanted to shoot two units it would take two dice so you're not really getting any savings there uh there's no special things about ignoring fatigues or anything so the the a special use of this seems to be shooting through your own units um, yeah basically so um, I I'm think this is to, a... Yeah, picture, I'm trying to picture the battle plan here. Do you, did you end up using this a lot? Actually, I think this one is dependent on what kind of setup you're running. Uh, the setups I run, uh, I don't end up using this a lot. Uh, I think to use this ability, you need either two good shooting units or one very good one to get like good economy from spending these dice because... In this battle board, the helmet, the uncommon, this is, it's 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 the gem. You, that's what you need. That's like the okay. fuel. Uh -huh. <laughs> so you want to be careful where you spend it. And this is an expensive ability. Um, so uh, I would say that it's situational. It's very good against some factions. For example, like the Pagan Rus, which can block your second activation. Mm, uh, okay. So you kind of put your warriors in front, the spear arm, and the and the uh, shooters behind, and they can shoot through with just one activation that he can't block the 
for example, a pagan Rus player or, so, or something else, in, in, in where you don't want your shooters facing him, or you can't activate, you know, one unit to move away and then shoot with the other or mm -hmm. something like that. Okay. This ability has some drawbacks. Uh, it's very, ex it's kind of expensive. It's uh, one of the most expensive on the board, uh, and. Uh, it's vul vulnerable to like activation blockers, you know, like the Danes, the Yams Vikings, the Mutatawia, they can block activations and they can turn this off. Mm -hmm. So you have to uh, be careful. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't seem like there's anything too special about it. Just more of a situational thing that, uh, you know, if it happens to turn out in turn three or four, if you got a uh, good opportunity, uh, but mm -hmm. is otherwise blocked by your own guys, you might be able to. Uh, save some effort by using this ability. I think it's useful because when you play like the Byzantines, you end up playing like in a, in a some kind of castle formation, like uh, units kind of close to each other, and sometimes you have to move maybe three units away to get a, a good shot. So you can use this to to kind of shoot through. But most of the times, I think you can get better economy by just the dice economy by just using the the dice to shoot uh, normally mm -hmm. but if in the situations where you have built this castle you you can shoot through it and it's kind of useful okay uh, so it's not it's not trash it's a, it's an okay ability that gets used mm -hmm. yeah and then um you know you kind of mentioned that the one shooting reaction defense dice from the combat pool so this would be a way to yeah. shield your shooters as well if you got crappy levees or something up front blocking for you so you could shoot at them mm -hmm. and s kind of stop them from shooting back you know potentially without them having to do multiple moves to get past yeah. your, your t turdly guys so yeah that's true that's true okay not too shabby let's go down to strategic con this one is two common dice it's a melee ability you can designate one friendly unit not engaged in this melee, gain a number of dice, I'm assuming those are attack dice, equal to half the attack dice generated by the models of this unit that are with an S of your unit. So I think my discretion there just confused me, but gain a number of dice equal to half the attack dice generated by the models of this unit that are with an S of your unit. So basically, if you have a unit nearby, those guys can chip in some attack dice basically based off and the number defense of defense dice and defense dice uh, okay so that's why it doesn't specify so okay cool um yeah well defense dice are kind of tricky to get so that seems like a yeah. decent ability so if you had a unit of eight warriors yeah and eight hearth guard behind maybe an eight hearth guard behind <laughs> well that's pretty good yeah and yeah. so can't number these. So the so models basically, physically have to be within short, so it's not just the whole unit. So you do have to push them in there. Um, yeah. Kind of like what you were mentioning, the units tend to get scrunched up. So this would be a reason yeah. to do that. So, half. So that's pretty so, bad. But they have to be within like S of uh, a model in the unit. So you can maybe put like one guy behind when you do the charge or something like that. Oh, uh, true. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of difficult to do because the charges are kind of you know you have very little control on how you do them. You have to do them in certain steps. But it's it's a possibility to uh, maybe leave a guy behind if you're using it on attack or on the defense, especially on the defensive. Yeah one guy on the formation mm -hmm. uh, a bit back and he can <laughs> tank up those uh, <laughs> yeah soak them in <laughs> so to go to our example so if you had a unit of eight yeah. warriors fighting and you're using it on this yeah. but you had the eight hearth guard behind for whatever reason so those hearth guard yeah. would generate uh 16 attack dice which would be half to eight yeah. and then you so you could have yeah. eight attack or eight defense dice or a mix of both yeah. So, wow. Yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, definitely some utility there. Um, but you're it's kind bound, of, you know, phys physically by getting the models there. But for uh, pure uh, dice generation, it seems quite quite good. 
but that's that's actually the difficulty here. It's not so easy to to get in a situation where you can use this because uh, what what's special about this ability is outside of the combat pool. This is the only way you can get attack or defense dice. So uh. practicing to use this ability a lot is kind of the key, and it's especially tricky on the offense. Um, yes, because uh, generally. So you're going to be moving in, and then your unit's sitting behind. So you kind of yeah. have to shut them off to the side. Yeah, you to, have to, to put a it. good unit on the side, uh, like on the side, and 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 put. I I need to describe. This is like the problem with the Byzantines. <laughs> it's like a geometric. <laughs> we need this a, is like a geometric I, faction. You yeah, have we to, need a marker board. But you know, to get everything out. Yeah, exactly, something like that. But, uh, you know, putting guides on the side and then having, uh, a, like, a block of 10 spearmen move in, um, and you can actually, if you're using hurt guard, you can actually get uh, eight of them or six of them. Six is in, I mean, anything over four dice is good, I think, mm -hmm. you know. If you can get anything over four dice, that's, that's the magic limit. Uh, there are a lot of use for this, but you have to... Um, you have to uh, kind of be clever with it, and uh, you need to anticipate where you're... Your, uh, if you're going to use it on the defense, you need to anticipate where your opponent is going to attack, because if he sees this coming, he's not gonna... <laughs> he's not gonna run into that block, you know? It, it, it's not... You can't surprise someone on the defense with this. Sure. Uh, sec that makes sense. Yeah, it's a lot easier to pull yeah. off defensively, but they... You know, you they have to walk into it. They have to <laughs> voluntarily come into it. So, like, if you yeah, were yeah. to cover two units, you know, string out your hearth guard or something, then you know the effectiveness of the ability goes down. If you're trying to cover yeah. like two two warrior units or something like that, so interesting. Um, uh, or, uh, another thing, uh, this is a good way. I mean, for like your warlord to gain a lot of attack dice uh, as well. Uh, because he's oh. like much nimbler and he can move and cover you know he can get a lot of uh, dice with this I i've done it uh, a couple of times oh cool yeah that's a really good point yeah um he's a lot easier to get in there for sure yeah and just five dice uh, is a but but uh you have to be careful with this ability because if something dies in melee within s you're gonna get fatigues uh, so <laughs> the old... this is uh, this takes a lot of practice to pull off. Actually, it's kind of simple to learn, but but it's not an ability that I think it's easy to use. Mm -hmm. Okay, takes a little uh, finesse to to pull this yeah. one off. So, okay, cool, interesting. Let's move down to scouting. Do you want to handle this one? Sure. It's a it's an easy one. Yeah. Nice and Activate short. up to three levy units, and these activations do not generate fatigue. So this is pretty obvious that the Byzantine levies are pretty good, uh, and this is what makes them really good. So this gives a lot of options. Uh, uh, you, I've seen people uh, use like I I often use one levy unit. I've seen people use two. Uh, like wow. one uh, unit of the step archers because they are they count as levy. Yes. So they can move up with the regular movement and move back with this, and then they get like four shooting attacks when moving up and four shooting attacks when moving back. So it's it's pretty good. Yeah. I kind of yeah. This this is a great ability. It's 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 kind of easy to see what it does and. Uh, you know, you can pull your guys up with the with the lords. We obey, and then move them back. Or, you know, uh, it, it's good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's. Uh, you, look at that. You can. Yeah, it's just a pretty awesome ability. I mean, you got a lot of things you can do with it. It just gives you good economy if you're taking multiple levy units of just getting them across yeah. the board. Or just one. I mean, no fatigue is pretty good. That's true. Yeah, it's going to be you know that actually the activation pool is an uncommon or a rare so you, know, you might as well use this um you know if, if you're doing a second activation so um so you still get a good bang for your buck uh with the one unit like you say but you can also you know lay down several shooting attacks with the, yeah. the same units and uh yeah re really good ability yeah i was curious about the uh 
how many levies I should should take. So I, I built a unit of the 12 normal levy with the javelins, but yeah. I am planning to build the step nomads. But I didn't really know if I would ever be taking both of them at the same time, or if I would just kind of have to decide one or the other. So you have seen people using both, both. to kind of uh, maximize yeah. this awesome ability. So <laughs> uh, one one good way to maximize it uh, further is to divide a twelve-man javelin levy into a five and a seven, uh, because then you get like uh, what's it like four plus three. Shooting attacks, what's that? Yeah, Seven? You, you round, you round up. <laughs> uh, it's, it's late here, sorry. No problem. Uh, so the five guys would generate three, three shooting dice, yeah. and then the, the seven guys would generate four, where if they were yeah. together, they, it would be like one less, or if you did evens, yeah. it would be one less. So, uh, yeah, take advantage of uh, the saga the saga rules, my man. Yeah, yeah. Good deal. All about taking advantage. But uh, again, uh, this this is an activation ability, and it can be blocked with, uh, you know, activation blockers and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So it's it's uh, that's like the only drawback. But it's not it's not a serious drawback, I don't think. Yeah, I mean, if they're gonna use those on levy, I, I think that's okay, probably. Yeah, sure. <laughs> if your levies have struck such fear into them, maybe those step nomads rerolling ones. Yeah, they're they're good. Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, moving on to support archers. This one I'll take a uncommon or a rare dice. This is a melee ability, uh, oddly enough. A friendly bow arm unit within the medium of this melee may immediately resolve a shooting, targeting one enemy unit engaged in this melee. Your units engaged with this melee do not block the line of sight uh, for this shooting. So we got another cool shooting ability uh, with the yeah. little extra spice by being able to shoot through your own guys so yeah it's kind of interesting uh, i would say <laughs> that this is like my favorite ability and the best one <laughs> on the board uh the only drawback with this is it causes a lot of rules arguments by the way it's written <laughs> yeah i was gonna say it doesn't look like um so one thing it's not a melee reaction ability so no it looks like they'll Still, you know, if a unit of eight guys charge in and you kill three, they're still going to generate attack dice as if they were eight yeah, guys because that already happened. Um, yeah. So wh where do the rules, arguments come in, I guess? Well, here's what I do with it, and you will understand. <laughs> okay. <laughs> give, me, give me the juice. Okay. So the, the thing I'll start with is you can use this on yourself, right? You can cast this spell on your own guys. So if you have eight... Uh, mounted hurt guard with bows and they charge in and do this it's going to cause some pain secondly uh, since it's used like in a separate shooting activation it go it goes right through like shooting reactions right ah, so okay. if, if somebody has a really painful shooting reactions like for example the pagan ruse or the warbands from the new 80s and Arthur book they have like really nasty ones Mm -hmm. This is a way to just to still shoot and not get the the you know the drawback. So okay, doing those two, two things kind of <laughs> annoys people. Yeah, I see. So what you said. So um, if you're like you've got hurt guard because with they bows, are within M. Yeah, yeah, they are a friendly bow arm unit within medium within M of themselves of the melee, right? Okay. Yeah, I, th that makes sense. Um, you know, if looking you compare at it, this to the yeah, yeah. Look, if you compare <laughs> this to like the Russian uh, ability, where the where the guy kind of the Eastern anger yes. when he shoots. I was going to yeah. say the Pagan Ruse has a similar type thing. We're talking with Mikey G, where the you know he's shooting, but he still takes the hits or whatever himself, right? Yeah, because he yeah, is because he's within M of himself or whatever it was. Okay, interesting. Uh, so that's uh, so, and also this ability. I always put a dice here. I mean, if I suspect like there's going to be a combat, or my opponent might rush, or anything before I go to bed every night, I put a dice. <laughs> <You just> put <laughs> a, uh, yeah, it's up. you know for good measure. It's it's uh, it's always I always you always find use for this, and I think it's a it's a w good way to buff your uh, combats and your defensive. You know, you, you're gonna take more models of your opponent. It's always good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a uh, way to uh, 
use your your shooters um you know to on, shoot on your more. turn yeah. yeah you know they they might not be in range and you don't want to move up but you have using this you can at least take your shots in their turn when they come in against you so excellent good deal uh, do you want uh to just a something about the drawbacks of this one so i said i use it a lot and it's good but so maybe people want to know how to counter it and the best way to counter this is actually it doesn't work well on units that don't generate a lot of dice so and so if you're like uh, if you can get them down to three shots then suddenly this is not worth using so if you have like a mounted uh, or a foot archer unit if you can get them to like five guys or six guys and suddenly this this isn't as good because with just three dice it's not going to do much mm -hmm. yeah i mean the shooting is always you just never know what you're going to get you get all three shots they can fail yeah. all three armor saves yeah uh, but it's, it's a lot nastier when you have like eight shots yeah then suddenly... <laughs> obviously yeah yeah it's uh, going to strike some fear then so okay do you want to move on to the contos ability Yes. Activate one of your no, uh, hurt card units that is uh, uh, that doesn't have bows for a movement. If they uh, end up in melee, roll one dice for each model in contact with an enemy model. For each uh, dice roll of four, add one more hit uh, to the number of hits scored by your unit during step four. So this is for the like uh, spear armed uh, hurt card. Uh, when they fight like very high armor opponents. Uh. Okay. Yeah. So it's interesting because it it's uh, activation ability. So you know it yeah. kind of sounds like it's a melee ability, but so it's activation. So you get a free uh, activation kind of out of it, and then in addition you yeah. get this extra kind of hit potentially. But a couple things. So yeah. it looks like you actually have to touch touch the guys in order to yeah and that's that's one of the drawbacks because according to the rules only two of your guys can move into contact with one enemy yeah. so you can't use this for uh, like uh, you know going through a warlord or anything uh, because you ju you'll only get two extra dice mm -hmm. and then you know usually so, you're, you're gonna have your units bunched up anyways because yeah. You know, usually you have a second rank because whenever you string yourself out in a line, it's generally not a great idea uh, going into the other guy's turn when they hit the one guy on the end. So um, <laughs> doesn't seem like you're getting much much bang for your buck here. Well, is, is that, that right? It depends. Again, I mean, if you're fighting somebody with armor six or can get armor six, then you know. Uh, they first of all they're not going to have a lot of models and they're kind of relying on you not hitting them and you can do that with i mean for a while we had uh, uh like the yams viking sigvaldi like ruling all the tournaments here he, <laughs> you know with the armor six <laughs> hurt god yeah. nobody could take them but the, with this i, I could uh, you know do, do some damage on them and uh, if if you get get them down to like you know if you kill five models in a round that's that's a very good uh, you know uh, also, it's good to clear buildings uh, because, ah, from my understanding, uh, they count as in contact when they get to to the building, and they don't get the fatigue when they charge buildings, the cavalry, because they can't enter it. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah, that's a good point. And there's usually a lot more surface area, so you can actually get yeah. more guys touching in. And you know you're probably going to like bounce back if you don't kill them all. So you can kind of spread them all out and then bounce back to a nice consolidated formation. Uh, there are uh, abilities that. that you can use that uh, about the bouncing back, which we will see later on, that uh, are very useful in such okay. situations. Cool, good deal. Uh, one more thing, like we said, this is a very expensive ability. This is the most expensive yeah. one on the board. Uh, so you have to kind of uh, see if is this where I want to put my helmet uh, or and is do I want to put like the the what's it called the rare dice here or, or generate more like activations so it's very expensive but in some cases it can be worth it but this is not something you use all the time okay. and I actually cheated a couple of times it's it's Ooh, non bow excellent. hurt card <laughs> yeah. Uh, 
I was going to ask about I that. Get excited. You know, how yeah. often you use one, one versus the other. We can talk a little bit about the army construction afterwards. Yeah. yeah. We're going through here, but yeah. Yeah, it's really limited to that one specific unit. Not even like your the warlord can't, can't even use this. No. Not that he would particularly benefit, but uh, interesting. All you right. need like a bigger unit, like eight at least. Yeah, so any saga ability. The more and more guys, the more more bang for your buck, right? And this is where we'll end part one of our Byzantine review. Part two will be available next week. In the meantime, if you have any questions or comments about what you've heard in this video, please post below. Otherwise, I'll see you guys next Thursday. Suck up!